Hello everyone, my name is Rafal and welcome to my vlog. So on today's vlog, I just want to talk about my recent photo shoot. So I posted a couple of images and there was a lot of confusion around them, how they were created. So I think this is a great opportunity to go through them, deconstruct them and explain to you guys how I create them. Um, basically, those images were created during my recent uh, headshot photography workshop during the Canadian Camera Conference and unfortunately Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, video footage from that photo shoot, but I have several images which I think they will help us to go through this entire process and show you exactly how those images um, were created. It was really simple process, but let me kind of jump into this and just kind of break this whole thing into little small pieces and we're going to discuss this whole thing step by step. So. Um, let's start with the gear. Um, everyone who knows me, um, you guys probably know that I don't change my gear for the last six years. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just basically show you the entire list of my gear, what I'm using. And th those things didn't change, as I said, for many, many years. And I just don't want to go again through this entire list because, you know, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing um, complicated. Um, if anyone has any specific questions regarding the gear, feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to explain to you why I'm using certain accessories and certain things just to make my images the way they are. So let's jump into the lighting and how basically I've decided what should I do in this specific location. So as I said, those images were created during my uh, headshot photography workshop and the, this entire workshop was held at SAID, which is the Calgarian uh, Polytechnic. Um, and there's a very, very old building. The place where we had uh, a workshop was a really small place, um, so there was no way we could shoot it. So I've decided to basically go outside and shoot um, in hallways. Um, so this particular hallway, um, as you guys probably see, there's there's nothing which is very, very, I would say, attractive and interesting. Uh, the lighting was extremely bad. There's some, some old yellow lights. And like when you look at it first, um, this whole thing looks very, very horrible. And um, a lot of those guys who are participating, they're basically questioning how I'm gonna create anything in this, this place. Uh, the good thing about this hallway, and that was like really good starting point that the hallway was very, very long and create very interesting lines and very interesting patterns. You just have to kind of create specific angles to basically enhance those lines and those patterns and I knew I can create something interesting. So the, the, there was yellow tint um, when it comes to the lighting in that hallway. So of course I had to overpower this very, very horrible lighting. There's a couple photographers who try to do a little bit of natural lighting um, and just compensate with, with white balance, with some different stuff, but um, nothing works. So the speed lights, and the soft boxes which I use, they were amazing to overpower all this bed lighting and create something uh, very interesting. So in this particular shot, which I'm gonna show you right now, I use uh, clamshell lighting because I thought for this uh, particular person, uh, this lighting will work very, very well. So the most confusing part I've noticed from all of your messages was the background. So the background was also lit up and I used my speed light. There was no any additional modifier on the speed light. It was pretty much um, speed light with the red gel on it. I had to work a little bit with the distance uh, so I can properly um, lit up the background. Um, the good thing about this hallway was that it was really, really nice and white ceiling and I could basically ba push the, the, the light towards the ceiling um, and the light spread out um, all over the place and create this very, very nice red haze in my background. So the distance between the background light and the subject was about five meters. It was fairly um, long distance, and this is because the, my lens, which I used and I shot at 200 uh, millimeter focal length, 
that's why the image on the background was very very compressed so I had to work with the distance to make the uh, the best out of it so there's a lot of questions when it comes to the proper distance between the uh, background light and the subject and um, there's no recipe uh, and there's no any rules which you have to follow to to make this done properly you have to basically figure it out yourself especially if you're shooting in some locations which are different um, each specific location has kind of own rules which you have to figure it out and 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 basically through errors and mistakes you have to figure out what works best so even if I tell Tell you right now what was the exact number which I told you already for that particular case uh, maybe you will be shooting in some different location and this is gonna this is not gonna work so don't take my words for granted and say well he says there's five meters and that's what it has to be you have to sometimes um, work according to the location and you have to figure it out um, you know what works best for a particular shot so because as I said um, in this hallway there was very bad lighting I have to overcome um, a little bit the light so I shot my speed lights on a little bit of higher power so I was shooting basically at um, 1 uh, 16 of the power which is fairly fairly you know much much more stronger light where I usually uh, shoot but that gave me um, you know the enough light to lit up the person properly and kill all this um, bad ambient light which was in that um, hallway so let's jump into the settings because that's something which also a lot of people were confused and they were asking me like why you shot this so I'm gonna list it all the settings here but we're gonna discuss them a little bit more in detail so first of all I shot at f5 and the reason is because there was a very very long hallway so I didn't have to have anything which I have to worry about to, to kind of distract the, the, the background um, and I wanted to make sure that um, at f5 I will get very sharp everything what is on the front line which is the subject right and the background was blurred anyways because as I said there's a long hallway there is nothing behind and um, doesn't matter um, what I would be shooting at um, you still would get this very very milky and very like smooth background so I was shooting at f5 also I want to mention one thing that the, the, the room was fairly dark and I don't have modeling light in my speed lights so I had to work um, in the conditions where you know the focusing was fairly hard um, and sometimes you could miss stuff but with the f5 I had to just literally focus on her forehead and I knew I'm gonna get um, entire face very very sharp um, as long as as um, the ISO because as I said the room was very dark I need to kind of bring some of the details into my image so that's why I push it my uh, ISO to 320 and of course for the shutter speed um, I want to make sure that nothing is blurred and I'm like and I have shaky hands sometimes so I want to make sure the shutter speed doesn't gonna affect my um, images so I was shooting at 250 um, of a second okay and the last thing is the retouching so I'm gonna show you the raw file how this image look like straight from the camera as you guys can see you still have this a very interesting red um, tint on on the background um, there is a lot of lot of stuff which I had to um, just kind of like do tweaks when it comes to the toning um, also I, I I work on the skin and I use uh, primarily dodge and burn technique um, and I went for that image twice um, and the last thing you guys probably noticed that the biggest thing which I had to work on was um, there's a little bit of messy hair which you know there's a lot of parts which in my opinion were distracting so I tried to clean up um, with the clone stamp tool and was pretty pretty easy process um, and yep the last thing was um, the, the color balance and do a little bit or as I said toning to just kind of bring the proper colors uh, for uh, the image so I edit this image for about 25 minutes 30 minutes max um, she had a really good makeup so that also helps me with the entire process of you know going for this image fairly quick um, as you guys probably see there's not 
huge difference and there's not much um, which I have to do in order to retouch this image. So it was fairly um, easy process. So I hope that was interesting. I hope that gives you a little bit of clearance on um, how I create this, this, this particular image. If there's any confusion, if there's any more questions, please feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to um, answer your questions. Um, I hope you guys like those images. I know they're very interesting. Um, I found them very, very cool because you know that the location was uh, fairly, I would say, unattractive. Um, and um, we, we were able to create something which stands out and, and have some kind of interesting form and has very, very, um, you know, cool feel to them and they pretty much look really, really nice. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned and I'll chat with you guys very soon. Bye-bye.